Previously on The Great Ace Attorney. By the way, Iris, what's with Mr. Holmes? He's like, oh, damn it, I forgot to pick up that gizmo. Ah, why didn't Susan remind me of it? I did remind you of it, stupid. Damn it, damn it all. To ah! He's over there just tossing the furniture, pulling out his gun, shooting at the wall again. Son of a... Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, go play your violin. They'll calm you down. Yes, yes, my precious violin. Ah, come here. I'm going to play you so... Ricking angrily! And now, back to grunting it, people! Hello! Smigopi! Back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney! When we last left off, holy mother of god, that was freaking awesome! Last episode was so, such a good episode! Oh my god, we got all this just wonderful characterization for both Iris, Gina... I actually wasn't sure Gina was gonna become like a... like a major character in I, or she was just gonna be like showing up for a single case, but... I'm glad she is becoming uh, more important here, and it looks like she's probably going to be in our uh, our defendant this time too. And then, of course, we have friggin' Hats getting shot as well. Sherlock getting shot. I wonder where he got shot. I couldn't when I looked at the cutscene again. I, I couldn't tell if like I didn't see any blood on him. I'm almost wondering was he wearing something that protected him, or like was it did he get shot in the chest, or was it his arm, or, or what exactly? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised though, if he. If he did get, like, shot, like, in the chest area, if he had, like, some kind of thing like the iris or he himself had made to protect him against, uh, a bullets, just in case, right? Some kind of Kevlar. <laughs> I don't know you guys say it like that. That final cutscene felt like a dog and rope episode. I know, right? It was like, that was a dog and rope level cutscene. We just switched to deadly life. Now all we need is that Monokuma body discovery announcement. Oh, pairs of bodies were discovered! Oh! <laughs> Damn it, who took my martini mix? I bet it was fucking me again, that slut! But it was a really good episode. It was a really great build up to this next case. Uh, it has me really excited. But I, it also had me sort of thinking, though, like, why is this game, like, so. Well, it feels so much better. <laughs> I don't know. Than a lot of the last few Ace Attorney games we've had. And uh, last episode, uh, Gabriel Lagusto uh, asked the exact same question. Uh, they said, oh my god, why is this game actually so good? Like, actually, why is that? I feel like one of the reasons is because we kind of already spend so much time with the good old AA world, that seeing a new crowd, new mechanics, a new setting is just really, really refreshing. And the fact that the writing is actually quite good just helps to elevate that feeling. And I agree, uh, Gabriel, I, I think that definitely is a good chunk of the uh, enjoyment from this, is just it being very different, you know? That's probably why I disliked the first case so much, because it felt so much like everything else beforehand, but now everything afterwards feels so different. But I also feel like, like, there's, I think, a little more to that, because, like, I think there's something about the way they're doing it here, where they really are trying to mix up the formula from previous games, and it just, it, it feels just more like a, uh, I think I mentioned before how it, it feels less of like a Monster of the Week, week Scooby-Doo-esque instance where at the beginning of each case we reset back to square one right we're like oh we're back in the office got a new case guys and i mean it got better i think the series got better as it went along i think the earlier games were a bit more like that it's kind of one of the reasons why i liked apollo justice so much was because we were sort of growing with apollo um, and there was still that overarching story that all tied together at the end. Other games that did that, like Dual Destinies did that as well a bit, but I, I thought that one was not as well handled. Uh, Spirit of Justice did that as well, and I thought that one was actually was quite good. Although that had still had its other fair share of issues. And then of course, Ace Turn Investigations 2 did that brilliantly, and that game was amazing. And I still hold that game in incredibly high regard. And I think this one's doing very much the same thing, you know? But even more so because it feels like a game that is is still building up despite us getting close to the end so it's clear that this is there's a story being told here uh that is not going to be finished this game but it will definitely i'm sure see its conclusion next time and i think that's what makes this feel so nice is that it it doesn't feel like someone's trying to milk a franchise for all it's worth they just have a nice story to tell with this group of characters that, uh, while all the other games feel so open-ended, I guess. Which isn't a bad thing, I guess, it's, I think it just goes back to what you're saying in that it feels different and it feels good. And like you said, the writing has been very, very good. But, uh, Gabriel Gusto, thank you so much for sharing your insightful comments and, uh, <laughs> Bruce asking the exact same question I've been asking myself when I was playing through it. And it's for that reason you are comment of the day. But yeah, I'd be curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are like in comparison to, like, previous turn of games. Like, do you find this game to be just a lot better like that's kind of how i'm feeling honestly like it just feels like a much more polished refined version of 
the mechanics, but also with a new twist. And like, I've just been thinking about it now so much because I'm just enjoying this so immensely. And I, I, I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm enjoying it more than I did some of the previous games. And I'm just trying to think, is it just because it's new and different? Or, is, or are they doing something different with the story structure? Uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but either way, I'm just enjoying the crap out of it. And I can't wait to see where it goes. But yeah, so uh, clearly Hatch is going to be our, our victim here, um, which makes, <laughs> God, really makes his, uh, his little character quirk uh, all that more uh, disturbing. <laughs> Although, I think we're going to point out, I mean, I actually wonder if we're going to bring it up at some point. Like, well, he was very suicidal, honestly. He might have offed himself, but we did see that he had a shot in his backside, right? When we poked our head through the window, so pretty sure we're not going to say, oh yeah, he managed to shoot himself in the back. And then that's going to make Gina, though, more than likely our, uh, our defendant. I'm hoping she's not dead. I, I don't think so, but I think she's just going to be the girl we have to... Make sure she didn't do anything. I'll be curious to see what reason she had for going there. I, I think it's to check for Iris to, to, to check and see that the manuscript wasn't there. Just to prove to her that Holmes is lying. But uh, I don't know. We saw two shadowy figures that I don't recognize. I don't think we've seen anyone that has the shape they did. I think they, they both had berets on. Clearly it wasn't the guy with the, the white suit. It didn't seem like he came back and did it. A lot of moving parts here, but I'm, I'm already excited. So, all right. Uh, let's wheel story, investigation three, let's get started. I'm enjoying those little anime cutscenes too. Oh fuck! Oh, bleh. Eek! oh god, right in my crumpets! Don't worry about me, Master Hodo. I chase after them, don't let them get away. Damn all the scrolling dialogue. Store room is just through that door. Hurry! I see dead people. Oh, fuck. She's got a gun in her hand. I did not see that in the cutscene. Gina? Okay, that is a very bad... That's a bad look there, Gina. <laughs> God damn. Uh... Okay, well, I'm sure somebody knocked her out and put that gun in her hand. In that instant, Hatch's shot became the scene of a crime. Everything after that seemed like a blur. From the rabble of the police, to the investigation of the scene, to the, the questioning. I didn't make it back to our flat on the Baker Street until shortly before dawn. I actually came back here? No, I want to investigate too! Well I, guess I, well, I guess I'm not really, I'm not part of the case yet. I gotta, I gotta first get a client. I wonder who it could possibly be. Uh, April 16th, 621 AM, Naruto Law Consultation Agency. Holy shit, it's early in the fucking morning! Oh, Iris! Hi, Iris. You doing okay? I got this telegram. Do not leave the flat. Oh, yeah. I asked one of the policemen to type it up for me. I just couldn't... I couldn't come back right away. When I woke up, both Jean Bean and Holmesy were gone. Hey, Ryu. What's going on? The poor girl is shaking. She's probably trying her hardest to stop her fear from getting the better of her. All right, I'll tell you everything that happened last night. Then it's true. There was a crime. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Fortunately, you write crime novels, so I'm hoping you're sort of used to it. By now. Although, probably... Well, the thing is, though, it's always with Holmes. Holmes always solves it in the end, and everything goes, you know, hunky-dory. It's not very often I think probably her friends are uh, the alleged killers here. I bad news, Iris. Hatch has passed away. He was shot. We were the ones that found his body. I thought as much. What? I saw all the police carriages in front of his pawn shop. I knew something bad must have happened. We went to the shop, we ran into two burglars, and ran out of the shop to try and chase after them, but they got away. Also shot the crap out of Holmes. Were they the people who shot Hatchling? Oh, they call, she calls them Hatchling. Oh my god. What the fuck? Stop it, Iris. Stop it. <laughs> I don't know. But I think the police has someone else in mind. What? Why? The person arrested her suspicion of Hatch's murder was... Gina. J Jane Bean? But why? Well, uh... Jane Bean would never, ever hurt someone. Of course. We know that. And why? Why did they... Did you let them arrest her? 
Oh, cause she had a guy in her hand! Sorry, there was nothing I could do. What did you do, Ryu? <laughs> it wasn't my fault! What about Holmes? Is he still investigating the case? Jeez, he knows that skipping breakfast is bad for your health. Uh... Listen to me, Iris. I need you to stay calm. Mr. Holmes? He's been taken to the, the hospital. What? Aww. Uh, um, he... He was shot, too. It had to shock. They shot Holmesy? No. Why? He's fine, though. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you telling the truth? Where is he right now? He's at St. Andrew Hospital. They're treating him as we speak. We have to go right away. Uh, we can't. Why? I'm Holmesy's family. No one can see Mr. Holmes right now. I've been told he's not allowed any visitors since he needs to go undergo surgery. Oh, shit. Okay, no, I got fucked. Never mind. I didn't see any blood in that cutscene. So I thought he just, like, fucking tanked that shit. I was like, ugh! Thank God I've got these abs, baby! He lifts his shirt and Susan goes like, Oh, yeah! She grabs some cheese and starts grating it on the abs. Mm, yeah! Put that on my Caesar salad! Do it, Mr. Holmes! Only for you, my lovely Susan Toe. And then suddenly Susan Toe snaps out of her daydream. Susan Toe! Susan Toe! Oh, I need to be taken to a hospital. Can you not see I'm bleeding out right now? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Toys not alive. They're going surgery. Surgery? Holmesy. Oh, Holmesy. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Two burglars are broken in a hatchet shop. They're the ones that shot Mr. Holmes. No, it was you. Did you? You did it, Ryu. No, it wasn't me. I swear. Inside the shop was pitch black when they ran off. As pathetic as it is to say, I had no idea what to do, and then... Listen, you have to chase after them. Don't let them get away. Hurry up and go. So I ran outside the shop, but... They were already gone, all because I was there, dragging my feet. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault that they got away. I think... That was for the best. What? Because if you've gone straight after them, you might have gotten hurt too. I hate that. That would have been horrible. Iris. Oh. Oh, you're our little buddy, Iris. Oh. Well, okay. It might be then that Holmes maybe is kind of out of commission for this case. Maybe so. Maybe I have to do almost like all of the the. Deductions by myself this time, or something? I don't know. Possibly. Say, so, you? where's Susie? Oh, Susie's still down at the station. What? Why? She's probably still in for questioning. They said it would probably take some time. But they already finished. They already finished questioning you, then. Well, I, I didn't really see the criminals all that clearly. Susie just stayed at the scene with Mr. Holmes. Okay. More importantly, I couldn't bear to leave Iris alone here by herself. Yeah. I sp asked Inspector Gregson, and he let me go home early. If only you brought me along. No, I couldn't risk you getting get your little funny pink headed shot. No! <laughs> what do you mean, JP got arrested? Well, there are already burglars there at the scene, and two of them at that. What's more? They shot Holmes and killed him, didn't they? Whoa, no! Holmesy is still definitely alive. Motherfucker, I'm out for vengeance! <laughs> you better watch out, here comes Iris! I switched the settings on this gun from shooting out teddy bears to shooting out missiles! That sounds incredibly unnecessary, and also it shoots out bears? What? Oh. Hatch was found in the storeroom where he keep, keeps his pledges. The storeroom is locked from the inside. From the inside? Hatch and Gino were both found unconscious inside. What? And according to the police who were examining the scene... There was no one else inside but them, right? Yeah, you're right. How'd you know? It's just our luck. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Do I have anything in my... No. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, come on! What is that supposed to mean, Ryu? I can't think of anything to say to her. Jeez! Why, why would I agree or not? 
Hey, Iris, I'm going to have to leave again soon. I know that I can't do much on my own, but I have to try to help Gina and Mr. Holmes. Go to investigate what I can. I want to go, too. Take me with you, Ryu. I'm sick and tired of waiting here alone. That's right. You're going to be my new little buddy now. I'm too sure about bringing her a 10-year-old to a girl to a crime scene, but she's she also got a PhD and is a fucking genius, so you know. But it's probably even worse for her to just sit around doing nothing. Okay, let's go. Go, Team Iris! Yay, Team Me! Do you want to help me out, Iris? Yep, I'll help you out loads, are you? Find Gina in the ga in the in the jail. Mr. Holmes is probably in the hospital. <gasps> also, we need to thoroughly investigate the scene of the crime. Oh my gosh, you gotta look you put a little goggles on! Oh, I see you're raring to go. <laughs> I'm gonna hop in an airplane! I should take Iris to the hospital soon. She's probably dying to see Mr. Holmes. Hopefully Mr. Holmes isn't already dying. <laughs> okay, here, so if I examine the room again with, with her with me. That spring is rolling in. It's finally starting to warm up around here. It's so nice to smell to smell the scents wafting from this kettle. Oh, Ryu! Do you want some tea? Oh. You got a little picture for it. No, but thank you. Maybe later. This is just matcha and Iris' herbal tea. Our flat must seem like heaven for the diehard tea fans out there. Those tea freaks are gonna freak out over my freaky special blend! <laughs> oh, my God. It's funny. It was actually sort of similar to bef uh, uh, before, uh, but not quite the same because I had her with me. All right. Is there gonna be a discussion about the shovel here? I, I wonder. Spade's been here since we first rented out this room. Ryu, that's not a spade. Ah, oh, come on. Are you another one of those trial fanatics? Oh, my God. Not exactly. That one's called a shovel. Oh, there we go. Yes. Iris knows what's fucking up. Now, Hodo and Sisto, you guys are fucking weird, all right? Iris, she gets it, man. She fucking gets it. A new challenger approaches. Iris comes digging onto the scene. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this game so fucking much. Here's the Daruma I brought from Japan. One of his eyes still white. I was thinking of filling one in after I won a not guilty verdict here in the British Empire. What? But he looks so sad with only one eye. I still don't feel comfortable calling myself an attorney when I'm so inexperienced. I think I want Sisto to fill it in when she thinks I've become the best attorney I can be. Then I'll just give him an extra eye real quick. Then for every trial you win, you can add more eyes. <laughs> and then you won't have to leave him with just one eye. Never thought of it that way. <laughs> now it's part of the symbolism, Iris. Uh, listen. Uh. The tea set Susan brought from back home looks so neat and orderly. I don't like bitter drinks, so I usually sneak in a dash of sugar and a splash of milk. Oops, he's old world turned upside down when he tried out matcha. Since then, he stopped putting sugar and milk in his coffee. Oops, he usually hates bitter stuff, but matcha changed everything for him. Ooh. Getting a little oriental there, Mr. Holmes. It's already been two months since we got here. My desk has already pretty gotten pretty cluttered. Holmes's desk is way worse. I bet if I really put my mind to it, I could have a desk as messy as his. Mm, I don't know. Huh? You'd have to be particularly talented to reach his level of messy. The way of ultimate clutter is clearly more profound than I once thought. <laughs> I'll get there. Just gotta work at it. All right, I'm reading the telegram. She's not here anymore, so fuck it. Fuck it, right? Oh, it's just one of those telegram thingies. Yeah, but you shouldn't go around opening them. Unless you're me. Fine. Anyway, let's see what's inside. <laughs> no, stop. I just told you not to open it. <laughs> I'm not gonna open it, silly. I'm gonna use this special chemical I invented to look inside without opening it. Don't do that either. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I guess this telegram is pretty important. She may be a genius, but she's a child at heart. Oh, you know what? Let's we'll do it. <laughs> Yay! I mean, come on. I want to see what's in there too. Just beyond that door is Susto's room. She may never lets me in there. I've never even seen the inside. Come to think of it. I hang out in Susie's room all the time. She's got her homesy body pillow. I knew it. I freaking knew it. She was holding out on me. I mean, I mean, what? Well, what's it like in there? I'm not 
telling. Huh? Please, you hold all our deepest, darkest, most bittersweet secrets. I guess Jap Japan and Britain are in the same boat when it comes to girls' rooms. Wah, wah. Hi, <laughs> fishy. This water tank is called an aquarium. It came with the, the room, so I'm using, I'm using it. I know it. I gave it to you, silly. Japanese prom meanders around the tank as a sea anemone sweeps back and forth below. Before I was born, these were really popular in London. Does that mean that they aren't they are anymore? Well, people started to realize how much of a pain it was to keep replacing the salt water. I guess I shouldn't have impulse bought these little creatures. Ah, crap, I didn't think that far ahead. See, like, what the fuck? See, like, I'm... Here's a good example right here. Like, I, I felt... I wanted to go back and re-examine all these things, get all the fluff dialogue, and a lot of times I don't really want to do that in the other games not because i don't love the characters because I, I do i think i'm just loving these that much more that i actually feel uh a stronger need to do it you know if that makes sense a new destination's been added <laughs> oh it's so lonely here without holmesy there's probably nothing in here but so i come in here to have a look see as well because like i said i'm still sort of incent incentivized to look Because I want to see what they say to each other. You know, it's like, this character's so cute. And I like their interactions with each other. It's like this big iron box being used to the coffee table. The box has a huge, sturdy-looking lo lock on it. Do you want to know what's in, in the box? Tells all of my really, really important... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Actually, Small tells me that she won't give me any more information. Oh, th now this I've actually seen. Because we actually did... I already examined this room with her around in it, right? Although, we'll look at some of the stuff that we... Like, the desk being empty now. Like, I did that back when we first met her. Is Mr. Holmes' desk always as tidy? I seem to remember some kind of extravagant machine being there before. Well, the rest of this place is still a mess. I bet he wouldn't even notice if something went missing. This thing as big as a machine that was on his desk? Might notice that. Hello, Violin. Is it Mr. Holmes' real partner? Genuine strut? Yeah, never mind. I'm never going to remember it. Anyway, for the work of a skilled craftsman, he, brought, he bought it for a cheap price. Hopes it gets better soon so I can play it again. Iris. Oh, that's sweet. Let's have a look at our little desk here. Now I think about it, I haven't seen you write any manuscripts in a while. There's always paper set in the typewriter ready for a sudden burst of inspiration. I can't quite decide on what to do for my next story. Well, why not write about Suseki? Or how about a saga? Mm, that could be pretty good. For the title, even show the yellow face. What do you think? Oh my god, no! <laughs> oh my god, no! Iris, no! That's a big no no! No, Iris, no! You go sit time out for that! Whoa, what did I do? No, get your casual racism out of here, alright? I expect that from all the other British people in this fucking game, but not you! Not you, Iris! It fits, right? Oh, Jesus, I don't even comment on it! No, that's a no no! <laughs> No. Uh, let's have some tea, Iris. Evil Western tea says still arranged meticulously on the table. Just one whiff of Iris's herbal tea never fails to calm the mind. Oops, he didn't drink any of my special herb of tea today. I want to take some to his hospital room. Good thinking. Okay, let's, uh... So we got, uh... Hatch's Pawn Shop. God, so it's actually interesting. You know, I seem I seem kind of uh, free to go where I would like to first. So let's let's go see uh, let's go see Gina first. Usually these things I always have to go in exact set order. Uh, April sixteenth, jail cell thirteen. Oh, she's in a little pose facing the other way. Hey there, Gina. I get the gun in there! <laughs> oh, come on, Gina, please. I thought we were past this. Die! Oh, I see you're putting off smoke launch into good use. Seriously, how do they... Uh, why do they let her bring that in there with her? Can't say I'm all that happy to be the target, though. What the bleeding act do you want? Huh? Gina, I don't think you understand the trouble you're in right now. I just want to be able to do something for you. You can't! Huh? Just clear off, would ya? Team beat, I trust you. 
There's no way you would ever shoot anyone. You trust me? I've heard better lies than that. Are you taking the mickey? Or taking the mickey? Huh? You don't know one bloody thing about me. I steal from any innocent tomb, Dick and Harry, to get body today. But if I had the chance, there ain't no way I'd pass up a pawn shop ice. I'll nick from anyone. This is how I work. D J Bean. So yeah, I'm going on trial tomorrow. Some government appointed lawyer guy came and said he'd defend me. But I blew him off. Says an attorney. I don't want one. She looked me right in the eyes when, while she said that. She seems to... I think she fears uh, connections, you know, like, she's, just, no, she's afraid to trust people, that's what it is, because she doesn't want to be betrayed down the line, right? Clearly she's been, she feels, I think, maybe betrayed by the parents who abandoned her, or maybe just by, I mean, not just trusting adults, like, you know, dealing with uh, creeps like McGundle, right? It's made her distrust so many people, and so she's afraid to, to, to make herself vulnerable to them, because, uh, yeah, she doesn't want to get her uh, heart broken, I think. Jane B, why are you being like this? Come on! Talk to your old pal Narahoto here. Shut up! Okay. Why'd you refuse the government appointed barrister, Gina? They just kinda told me to sign a letter of request. But at the end of the day, trials are just a cesspit of lies. You just point the finger at someone else and they have it. That's what adults do. But why do you think so? It's always been like that living in the back alleys. Some geezer tells you what to do, but the next minute they're snitching on you to the police. I've had plenty of backstabbing around me. A few of them nearly got me caught. The second you start trusting others, it's over before you even know it. Yeah. Gina, about the trial tomorrow. If you'd like, I could... No! J Jane Bean, do you not trust Ryu? No, I doubt. Come on, you saw me in that, well, no, no. I was gonna say, you saw me in that other case, right? With McGondle, oh wait, that's right, I got him off and uh, yeah, I failed. But that was your fault, Gina! <laughs> You're the one who took away all the fucking evidence we were, they were just gonna get used against him. Just so you know, I would've done it if you hadn't done that. Please, just, just leave me alone. Come on, please. Gina, we need you to tell us everything. What on earth happened at the pawnbrokers last night? It's basically what you think. Looked like I'm out at the jackpot. I bit something from the storeroom, so I broke it. And then I got busted, just like that. Shot that guy right in the fucking face. Woo! Gene, me, me, why would you do something like that? Well, why do you think? It's cause, cause there were things there I could have stole for a good price. Being a pickpocket's difficult. Usually you'll try and really hard, and then have nothing to show for it. Yeah, so she's she's putting up a big old front, but no, she was really going in there to check the manuscript for Iris, because she fucking cares about her. You freaking Sundari! Is that really the only reason you broke into the pawnbrokers? What are you on about? Could it be that you had a different objective in mind? Shut up! Whatever I say now doesn't matter! Jane Bean, just talk to us. Whatever it is, we'll trust you. You'll trust me? You're both deaf. Everyone lies, you know. Don't matter who they are. And? Among all the liars in the world, I'm the biggest, fattest liar of them all. J Jane Bean, what makes you work worse than anyone else? I ain't answering until you click my little button. Why do you think you're the biggest, fattest liar of them all? Come on, tell us more about it. Please, please. Sorry, I gotta go off a question soon. Jane Bean. Oh yeah. Hey y'all, take this. Think of it as a souvenir. Oh my God, is that is that the Wasai w Waga High? <laughs> Covered in snow? <laughs> no, actually, it's probably just a different white cat. The heck? Oh, you're so pretty. A picture? It's a cute cat. It 
was in one of the goat's pockets, but I don't need it myself. Oh. What? Was this part of what the other guy was looking for, but he didn't find it last time? Did she take it and then put it back? Or something? Then why would she give it to us now? Such a tiny picture. I wonder why it was in your in your coat. Anyway, you don't need to bother coming back here anymore. See ya. Jane Bean. We have a cute white cat. Gina gave it to us at the ga at the gal. I mean the jail. Uh, all right, well, let's have a little look. See. I can't rotate it. Uh, oh, hello. I see stuff on the back. There's something right on the back of this photograph. Pledge date, th th February 13th, 9 p.m. Item pledge, small box. Loan amount, 10 shillings. Repayment date, April 13th, 9 p.m. So this photograph is actually a pledge ticket for Mr. Hatch's shop? The 13th of February, hmm? That's two days before the incident and the omnibus happened, right? Oh. Small box. What well, detailed scripture might have been useful. Hey, Ryu, this is a pledge ticket. And this small box might be in the pawn shop, right? Oh. We should take a look at the item McGundle deposited. Hmm, okay. But also, oh, look at the kitty. Look at the kitty. The cat in the picture is pretty cute. It reminds me of a little wakahai. I never known a cat to sit outside in the snow. Instead of curling up by the katatsu. Any British cats are different. Oh, you didn't comment on it. I know. I couldn't betray Wonga High like that. He'd be mad at me if he knew I was ogling over another kitty. That's true. Uh, Alright, let's go to the pawn shop then. Oh! Hi, RC! Coach from Scotland Yards parked in front of the, the pawn shop. I can't believe something so terrible happened this close to home. I was so sad. I'm sorry, I should do something to prevent this. Nah, you don't need to apologize for anything. Huh? The criminal's the one to blame, after all. Let's investigate as much as we can. You're right, let's get to it. Who's a good horsey? Who's a good little horsey? All right, okay, here we go. I imagine the inspector's gonna be here. Uh, April 16th, Hatches Bond Brokers! I got a bunch of guys in here. Hello there, for the King! Yes, for the, for the King, wherever he is. Is this where Holmesy was shot last night? Yeah, two burglars are ransacking the shop. But, it's kind of weird with the police here. It doesn't really seem like that's what happened. Y yeah, got that right. In fact, it looks like the police are the ones doing the ransacking. That's true. If you squint, those outfits make them look kind of like common burglars. Oi! Mind your manners! Alright, it's me. Here with me fish and chips. Oh, good morning, Inspector. Mm. Good work last night. Thanks to you, we met go to the crime scene while it was still fresh. Still, bloody shame you let those burglars get away. Nope. Oh, sorry! Sorry, I, I'm sorry, I just felt like living last night. Oh, the police were stepping up patrols on the side of town. Holmesy has really bad luck, doesn't he? No. Oh. oh! Milady! Oh, that's right, he's... He is... He is gaga over this little girl. I didn't realize you were here! If anything bad happens to Holmesy, it's your fault! Make sure he gets the best doctor, got it? Well, of course. He's being treated by one of the, do the best doctors in London. Also, I don't think it's Ryu's fault that the burglars got away. Y yes, uh, of course not. You open my eyes, milady. <laughs> oh my god. Everybody loves Iris. Everyone knows it. His soul was nowhere near as black as his clothes. Whoa, what in the world is happening? The second he saw Iris, Spectre Greg's demeanor changed entirely. Oh, milady, how rude of me to forget. Are you thirsty? H how about juice? Would you like some juice for your poor dry mouth? Huh? Did you say you're thirsty, Toby? <laughs> Try some of this. It's my special blend of herbal tea. I decided to have to have this cup nearby, and now I'm drinking with my MPE extended. Glug, 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 glug. 
delicious. This is absolutely delightful. I still have no idea what's going on. Stop it! Tell me you're being weird! Inspector Craig says stop it! I like it better when you're rough and tumble detective guy. I am still that guy. I was have a soft spot for little pink haired girls, alright? Remind me of my own family. I'm not a pussy, don't look at me like that! Come at me, you're not rude! No, no, stop it! <laughs> He's over there, like, jamming his fish and chips down his mouth. You like it? Do I still look like a pussy now? I didn't say anything! <laughs> How's the investigation going on your end? Well, it's a very simple case. You already have a decisive evidence. The indictment of that big ball getting arrested last night was just to prove. In a diamond against Gina? Exactly. Trial will be tomorrow at the Old Bailey. What is your decisive evidence, Toby? What is it? Tell us! N no, no, no. I, I can't let that information go. Not even for you, my lady. Mm. Uh -huh. Let me guess. The two people who ran away from the sea last night have already been caught. What? And maybe, just maybe, those two people will be testifying in court tomorrow. How? How? <laughs> How did you know? I just kind of felt like that might be the case. Oh, she's really scary sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay, well they already caught them? What? Okay. I, I, oh, all right. I guess they must be saying that Gina was part of their group or something. Maybe they're also pickpockets? I don't know. So the two that shot Mr. Holmes have been arrested then? Well, shortly after, some of the policemen on patrol caught them. I guess you guys are useful for something, at least. And Gina is at the jail right now, correct? Right, she should be. So long as she hasn't stolen the key to herself from one of the guards. Mm. So, what is Mr. Holmes' condition? It's confidential. As an inspector of the yard, I can't just let that information slip. <laughs> I'm just gonna get out of you. Holmes is having an operation at St. Andrew Hospital, right? Why can't I see him? I'm his family. I, I, I apologize. Yeah, Mr. Holmes is currently not allowed visitors. Huh? The bullet ended up passing through an artery, and the bleeding is severe. No. Damn. Okay, he got fucked up. Never mind. I thought, I thought I'd just take that shit, but nope. Nope. Seemed all right when we, he was initially shot. But even the great detective goes strangely quiet if he loses too much blood. <laughs> is this supposed to be surprising? Mr. Holmes is human just like the rest of us. He's undergoing an urgent operation at the moment. They have to stop the bleeding. So, so he'll be okay, won't he? They'll save Holmesy, right? <laughs> of course. He'll definitely be okay, my lady. Really? How do you know? What? Uh, how? Well, uh, that's... That's because, because he's, of course, because he's the great detective. I hope he makes it through this. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Holmes here. <laughs> oh, Holmesy. I'll make sure you'll be the first one to know when the operation is finished, my lady. See, I can be a nice guy when I want to be. When you're Iris, I can be a nice guy. It's just something I've been wondering about personally for a while now, but... But I can give these fish and chips. No, but... Well, yes, actually, I've been wondering that, but also... What do you want, boy? <laughs> boy. It's clear there's between how you treat me and Iris. What are you saying? The police, everyone in the world is equal. But you treat me... You treat me differently. It's obvious. <laughs> the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Oh? I'm a character in those stories, Inspector Tobias Gregson. Yeah, you're the acquaintance of Holmesy after all, so I gave you a little cameo or two. What did you write about him? Mm, I forgot. To quote Holmes, he is the odds greatest asset. Really? And then, from the next month on, would you believe it, my salary just doubled. Uh, oh, wow, that's great. People all over London are ringing the events of the Sherlock Holmes, after all. There's even a fan club for me at the yard now. They're writing a blog about me. I don't even know what a blog is. Now that I think about it, he was around the time 
That was around the time that you became so obedient. And Melody would uh, have the home say even one bad thing about me. Something like Gregson is terrible. He's really been getting full of himself recently. Oh, I see. Okay, it's not it's not because you think just ours is adorable and she's your best little buddy. It's no, you want to suck up to her so she doesn't write any bad shit about you in the books. What would happen to my salary? Oh, you're being surprisingly honest about this. Well, when I think about that, I get scared. Sleepless nights come one after another. You know I wouldn't do that. Whenever a new issue of the Stranded magazine is released, I flick through it. Think it's troubling. That must be tough. There you go. Some of my special blend of herbal tea. It's got to play into something, all right? Because we keep seeing that little thermos. <laughs> ah, delicious. Delicious. This is absolutely delicious. Jeez. Just to savor it, man. I chug it. Oh, that reminds me, boy. Go have a word with you. Uh, sure. What's up? I forgot. There's a message I have to relay to you. A message? I should ask him about it. Go select my little option first, though. Or does it count? So, Inspector Gregson, what did you need to tell me? It's about that graceful legal assistant that aids you in your black, he black heart. Something about Susie? Yeah, whatever. She should be undergoing questioning down at the station at the moment, right? Nope, not anymore. Ran out of time, you see. Half time? Oh, it's because of her appointment, right? Of course, because of the summons issued by his lordship, Chief Justice Vortex. Uh, oh, I forgot about that. We finished up our questioning and used one of our police carriages to get her there. But she doesn't have money for the ride, ride home, so I was told to send you to the high court. For goodness sake, she has some nerve to use an inspector as a messenger. I understand. Thank you very much. Are you? Why was Susie summoned? Honestly, I don't know. Nobody tells me any of that. High Court of Justice. Better head over there. Can I uh, inspect around here at all? I have to wait till you guys get your asses out of here. So I got some stuff on the ground, right? Am I examining it? Oh, I'm examining the counter there. All right, let's get investigating. Hey, you. Black Heart of College boy. What do you think I'm doing? Huh? Oh, I was just, you know, investigating. Not on my watch. Keep your grubby paws on my crime scene. Oh, why can't we investigate? We use an attorney, you know. I'm, I'm so sorry. Please excuse me for enforcing these boring old rules. But that college boy needs to let a request from the defendant if he wants to investigate. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. The defendant. If he had something like that, I would let him touch whatever he likes without complaint. Did you hear that, Ryu? We just need a letter of request from Jamie. Or how he'd like it if it, I shoved that letter down his throat. Instead of his fucking tater tots! The fish and chips, get over here, boy! Oh god, not again! Okay, well, I guess I can't do shit. Alright, so should I go there first, or should I go see Holmes? Actually, it sounds like I can't see him anyway. Uh, let's, uh, let's go see, Su let's go see Susto. I, I, I feel like I'd probably go to the hospital, but I won't be able to see him. Uh, April 16th, Chief Justice's office! Have to say, the impressive atmosphere never fails to crush me to a pulp every time I come here. Oh, God. Really? Feels normal to me. Huh? Look at those suits of armor! They just look silly to me! I must have I whisper that shit to myself again! God dang it! You have some seriously good ears there, Iris. Oh yeah, some of you guys point out, uh, she's, she has pink twi twin tails, is like a super genius, and a bit of a human lie detector. Is she related to Ferris? <laughs> oh my god, you're right! It's just like Ferris Yan Yan! They just look silly! Wow, you sure are brave, Iris. Uh, are you absolutely sure that tomorrow is fine? Uh... Yes, thank you very much. Susito and yep. Some more Vortex and Susito. Sounds like they're, to they're talking about something pretty serious. That is all. You should return to your flat now. I'm sure there's much you need to prepare for before your journey back to Japan. Back to Japan? What the heck? 
What did he just say? Her journey back to Japan? Susan Tao! Uh, oh god! Hello there. Hi. Oh, the timing of those birds is always so punctual. Naruhoto? What were you two just talking about? Afternoon, Master Naruhoto. Good on you for coming out here to pick, up, pick her up. Answer me! What is this about going back home to Japan? And... Why tomorrow of all days? Tomorrow? Jinpin goes on trial! Gina? I should have expected this. She's been arrested on suspicion of mur murder, hasn't she? Susan, tell what did you do? Susan, tell what exactly is going on? Um, there's no need to worry, Naruto. The only person who will be returning to Japan is me. But I don't want you to go! You're my own buddy! You'll be able to remain here as long as you- I don't care about that! Why is this happening? I'm told that my father has fallen ill. Oh, right. Your dear old daddy. I, I kind of forgot about him. What? Your father? Professor Mikatoba? Excuse me. Y yes? Are you Rinosuke Naruhudu, the defendant in today's trial? Yes, that's me. I'm Eugene Mikitoba, a professor of forensic path pathology at Yume University. The government of our great British Empire received a telegram for your country. Ten days ago, my father collapsed due to a high fever. The root cause remains unknown. God damn it, it better not be that crazy British bitch again. And if her condition is getting worse with each passing day. Oh, no. It takes around 50 days by boat to reach your imperial capital of Tokyo from here. I advised her to depart as soon as possible. That makes sense. That is unfortunate. Early tomorrow morning, I will be departing from London. I didn't see this coming at all. Yikes. It's kind of hard to be like, hard to argue. Yeah, you gotta stay here. Uh, well, if your dad's sick, that's kind of a, yeah. Oh my God, it's gonna be 50 days till you get there. Someone really needs to invent an airplane or something. So Cheetah really is gonna be put on trial? Her diamond was made official a short while ago. The trial starts tomorrow. What? But it hasn't even been a day. Cheetah, ah, the girl involved in the shooting at the pawn shop on Baker Street, correct? How pointless. This is clearly just a case of a corner pickpocket frantically taking a shot. Scotland Yard does not have the time to waste on such an insignificant case. Insignificant? How mean? Jane Bean didn't shoot anybody! Who the hell is this pig thing? Master Naruhu? Uh, yes? In light of your status as an exchange student, I will overlook this girl's disrespect. However, I do recall permitting a child here. I suggest you leave. Oh, snap. Dude, he's going, he is going full fucking Damon Gann on us here. We understand. Criminals will tell the most sickening lies without abandoning an eye, if it means living another day. Police squander their time breaking apart their endless lies, while London drowns in crime. And in the midst of all this, there's a far more important incident that requires our attention. In important incident? Yeah, think about it. Yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gretz is something similar. Well, it goes without saying, but that case is of no concern to any of you. Please? You'll have to wait till the second game, maybe. I have just under three minutes until my next meeting. If you'll excuse me. Excuse me, I have one last question. And what would that be? It's about Gina's trial. Would there be any problems if I acted as her defense? No, that would be perfect. Huh? She still has no attorney assigned to her case, after all. What? That's horrible! I mean, it's true that 
that Jean means a bit of a thief, but... Do not misunderstand me. Those who cannot afford their own attorney are instead appointed one by the government. So long as she signs a letter of request, she will get a fighting chance free of charge. But this defendant is steadfast in her refusal to do so. Why? What on earth happened? Who knows? If you want to know so badly, go ask her for yourself. Actually, we did. I just forgot. <laughs> go to the jail and have a, ch go have a chat with her. I will. Thank you, my lord. Well, it's about time I leave. Excuse me. Fairly well. It's a freaky ass dude. Can't believe all this is happening right now. She has a trial. Sister's returned to Japan. In any case, we should depart. Come along, Naruto. Iris. But, Susie. You gotta go home, right? Shouldn't you be packing and stuff? As a legal assistant, there's one thing that I am always duty-bound to do. I'm a state my defense attorney, Ryunosuke Narahodo. That comes first. S Suzuto! She seems so conflicted. To be honest, my mind is a mess. But I'm going to do what I can right now. As an attorney! I got this shit! Those motherfuckers thinking gonna help keep me down with a better guess again, boy! Alright, so... Should I go back to the jail now? Or no, maybe, should, maybe now I can go see Holmes. Wow, nice fucking clinic we got here. This is run by Dr. Hottie. April 16th, St. Andrew Hospital, room 3. Holmesy! Huh? Mr. Holmes doesn't seem to be here. He, he really isn't. That's odd. I was told that he would be on that bed there. Oh, maybe. His wound wasn't as bad as they thought, so they let him go home early. Maybe, but I don't think that's the case. Mr. Holmes is definitely in critical condition. I can say that with certainty. Oh no. Was he hurt that badly? Hold it right there, you three. It's gotta be me, right? Uh, no, no, it's me. No, this is not in this room. Why are you here? What? My home's his family! What? No. Uh, my, my, my apologies. A uh, young girl and two fishes in Japanese. I'm not surprised his family is as weird as him. <laughs> I feel like there's a bit of a misunderstanding going on here. Mr. Policeman, where's Holmesy right now? Uh, he seems to be undergoing major surgery. Major surgery? It's already been a fair few hours since he was brought into the operating theater. It's been that long? Is Mr. Holmes okay? Well, no, it's just me. I'm working on him. Every anesthetic, aesthetic has failed. What? He's muttering something like, I shouldn't have drunk so much coffee last night. <laughs> wow. In any case, probably another few hours before it's finished. Really? Alright, thank you. Oh, Holmesy. Excuse me, Naruhodo. What is it, Suzuto? Excuse me for this selfish request, but I would like to go and speak with Gina. I've just remembered. I still haven't said goodbye to her yet. Oh, that's right. After today, Suzuto's never going to see Gina again. Expression worries me. But for now, let's head back to the, the jail. Okay. Okay, we'll do. Jada! April 16, jail! Cell 13 again! Oh! Hey, Jada, we're back! It's your best buddy, Naruto! Get out of here! Okay, bye. We decided to pay you another visit. Time to demon die today! Oh, come on, seriously, are we, are we past this yet? Ah! What do you want this time? Go to Tugger Mikola! She almost makes it look valiant as she struggles to reload that thing. Mm, maybe I should streamline the reloading process. <laughs> I'm plugging your ass a lesson proper this time! No matter how many times you show your mug, I ain't got nothing to say to you!
But Susan tells leave it! Don't you get it? Gina, there's something I would like to say to you. What do you want now? I want to say goodbye. Goodbye? I must return to Japan tomorrow. Most likely, we will never meet again. Meet again. Uh, oh! Oh, all right! I met so many people here in London. I've made so many memories, both good and bad. But the most tragic memory of all will be the sight of Iris's tear stained face. I'm helpless to cheer her up. Susie! Wh why do you think the ball is me? Iris and Arahoto both trust you deeply, Gina. You won't even return the favor? That's right! So what? What are you playing at? I just don't want to see them hurt. Hurt by none other than you, Gina. B by me? Yes, as such, I have no one simple request for you. I want you to completely betray their trust. What? Once you do, you'll get what you want. Well, I'll leave you alone to rot. Oh my god! What the fuck, Savage Susan? Oh, boom! <laughs> It'll leave you all a fucking demon die! Fuck! What needs to be done? Everybody tells lies, no matter who they are. If you honestly believe that, then I want you to prove it. Prove that you lied, Gina. Oh. Jane Bane, that's what you said. You're a big fat liar who doesn't deserve a second chance, right? Please, Gina, tell us the truth. As a mere legal assistant, this is my final request to you. No, no way! Would, she, would Gina really tell such a deprecating lie? Maybe. You're referring to the trial from two months ago. Oh. The trial where Kazuma Gundam was declared innocent. Bizarre murder happened inside a moving omnibus. During the trial, you were brought to the witness stand by the prosecution. Yeah, that's right. Throughout the whole bloody trial, I just lied and lied. They weren't just little porkies either. They were some pretty awful ones. Could you tell us more? Oh, here we go. Finally, start to learn the truth, maybe. It was two months back. Police summon. Uh, it was two months back. The police said. I had to see her mouth moving. It's not like it was me. Police summoned me and loved me to the witness stand. And then you testified Mr. McGunnell was declared innocent. At the time, I was fibbing like nobody's business. So that is what she meant, after all. Yeah. What kind of lies exactly? Remember when I said I was hiding in the omnibus that night? That was true. I was in the truck, under the seat. It was pitch black, so I couldn't really see nothing. Oh. Then there was a loud noise. It sounded like someone was taking a dive or something. But didn't we already see that there was stuff inside that truck? How'd she fit herself in there? She'd take it out? And then after that, Mr. McGunnell found you, right? Yeah. He ate me out of there. And then he... He made me sit by the dead bloke. It was dark inside the cage. Before I knew it, I had his blood all over my hands. I was so scared, I couldn't even make a peek. His blood got on your hands? That means... The person they saw through the skylight must have been Gina. Even though we saw a, a man's body when they looked down, and they, they remember there was a time when they showed a cutscene of that, and it looked like it was a man's body. But maybe it was just based on that assumption. Has so Mr. McGundle questioned you about your life and why you were hiding in the carriage? Yeah, but that ain't all, all of it. What do you mean? McGundle threatened me. What? He said I couldn't tell a soul about nothing. Not what I saw or heard in the carriage. And not what he tried to do after the omnibus stopped. He said if I could keep it all a secret, he'd let me off. Hmm. 
I see. Tell us everything you had to keep quiet about. Everything you saw and everything you had heard. I do wonder, like, because... Oh, wow, okay, look at all that. I do wonder because, like, we had... One of the things that we ended up getting out of the trunk there was all the stuff that was stored in, right? To, to, to show that, oh, she could have hidden in the trunk. But we're saying that she actually did hide in the trunk? So where was all the stuff that the carriage guy kept in there? She just shove it to the side, she squeezed herself in there? Okay, what I saw. You said you were told to keep what you'd seen a secret, but you were hiding in the trunk under the seat the whole time, right? What's more, Mr. Magunda was sitting on top of that seat. Well, yeah, but when I heard the sound of someone falling, I couldn't help but scream. He yanked me out by my arm, and that's when I saw it, all of it. Some old bloke was on the ground. Next, it was a real pretty, shiny disc. Oh. A disc? Wait, could that be? Yeah, it's that disc that the inspector took yesterday at the pawn shop. It's the music box disc was on the floor of the carriage. That number gundle noticed it straight away. It snatched right up and shoved it deep in his inner coat pocket. So in other words, that disc was originally inside the omnibus where the crime was committed two months ago. Tell no one about this. That's what he said to me. Hmm, okay. What I heard. It was pitch black inside that trunk. I was listening out for any and all noises. Eventually, I heard someone climbing into the carriage. That was Mr. McGunnell getting on by himself, wasn't it? No, there was someone else, too. Huh? What I heard was two sets of footsteps. Oh. Mr. McGunnell and the victim. Log logically, those are the only two it could have been. If I'm right, the victim was a bricklayer named Mr. Mortar. So they came all together? This time, Mr. McGunnell testified during the trial. Ah. Uh. Whenever I ride in a coach, I always end up falling asleep. Then, Gina, your testimony backed up his claim. All I could hear was the sound of the old geezer's coat blowing off. That was just a lie. It was a lie! The two blokes in the cash weren't sleeping at all. They were talking, real quiet like, about something the whole time. What? What exactly what were they talking about? Don't know. The carriage was too noisy. Couldn't hear nothing. However, with this knowledge, we know that the truth for certain now. Mr. McDonald and the victim knew each other. Yeah. They should got on together. So Mr. McDonald was lying after all. Okay, after the crime. There was a dead bloke inside the car, so I knew we'd get busted right away. If I remember correctly, the two patrons on the roof instantly noticed the murder. When the carriage stopped, McGundle hit, hit me inside the trunk. And then, the two people on top quickly ran off to call the police. Those were Mr. Fairplay and Mr. Lady first, right? That's when McGundle asked the coachman to do something. What are you asking? Might I ask you to go and pledge my coat at the pawnbrokers over there? Oh. As for a reward. Oh, I know. How does ten guineas sound? Oh, interesting. The, the pawnbrokers? Was that... Ah. Uh. Yeah, it's on the old Uncle H Hatch's pawn shop. Coachman snatched the ten guineas and on the coat and ran off. Why did it take you so long to go and get the coat? Oh, probably because she needed the, the pledge ticket, right? How'd she get it, though? After that, my gun will let me out of the carriage. He let me go after giving me a condition. A condition? McGundle's condition. Tell me more about why McGundle let you leave the scene. Gina, what was the condition he gave you? I was told to keep me lid zipped and talk about absolutely nothing I'd seen or heard there. And one more thing. What else? Said it was the most important condition. 
I just gave that driver some money and sent him off on a little errand. Did you see what I asked him to do while he was inside the carriage? You had him pull up that coat at a pawn shop, yeah? Why, aren't you smart? I want you to keep the pledge ticket for that coat. The pledge ticket? By me? Within the next two months, I will come to retrieve it. Until then, you shall keep hold of it. You better not lose it. <laughs> All right. However, if I don't happen to show up within that time frame, I want you to go to that pawnbroker's and have the redemption period extended. If you don't do that, my pledge will be forfeited, and the coat will be put up for sale. What? But, but I, I don't have that kind of money! Here's five pounds. That should suffice. Now listen here. Don't get any funny ideas. If you do... I, I got it already! By the way, a few days from now, the police will come for you. What? The police? Indeed. They'll ask you to stand in court as a witness. Before we finish here, how about we have a quick rehearsal about what you should and what you shouldn't testify? Oh. Wonder why I give it to her so the police probably because the so the police couldn't find it, right? And then and know about it. Then I just left the place. He had the pledge ticket in some in some bushes somewhere near the scene. I went off to get it the night after. Monster McGundle. Force this poor girl to commit perjury. Damn. I didn't know you peeved at me. That trial was so important. Now it's a right state because of my fibs. I'll make it so you can't live in the East End anymore. That's what he said to me. Oh. That's so cruel. That bloke knew all about the back alleys of the East End, and about us and all. A bunch of kids with no family, who all got together and made a place to call home. Then, Costner McGundle. He said he could run us out of there whenever he blew me warning. If he couldn't live there, then we'd really be up a creek without a paddle. So, you know, my hands were tied, really. Oh, I see. I mean, with how much influence influence McGundle had, right? It, it wasn't out of the uh, the question that he could do something like that. God damn, man! Fuck me! This seems like Matt on guard on fucking crack. <laughs> McGundle was kind of a fight. It was kind of a monster. Thank you for telling us, Gina. But at the end of the day, you're still pissed off with me, right? You think I'm angry? Then do me a favor. What? What? you sign a letter of request that claims me as your attorney for tomorrow's trial? What? Oh, and if you don't want my defense, go ahead and tear it up later. But right now, I can't investigate the crime scene without it. I investigate? Mr. Holmes was shot during all the com commotion last night. S -s -s Seriously? They say Holmes is going through a major operation right now. B Blimey! But he's gonna be all good, right? I have to get to the bottom of this. Not just for you, but for Mr. Holmes, too. Fine. What ifs? All you need is my signature, yeah? Pretty much. Suzuto? Yes, I know exactly what you're about to ask. The letter request is right here. I always keep it up my sleeve. Oh, here we go. We're making progress. Sign it, Gina! I don't want any defense, though. So... Maybe she feels like... She's like, well, I don't... I don't deserve it, right? I don't deserve defense. She looks so lonely when she acts like that. Their defense signed by Gina Lestrade. So let me investigate the crime scene freely. Yes! Now we have this. We should be able to check out the crime scene. Once we're done, let's come back and pay JB another visit. Feels like we finally started to unveil Gina's true feelings. I'm sure no one else can understand the true weight of this letter of request. And so, we head to Hatch's to shop, where Inspector Gregson awaited us. Though, I'm sure the good Inspector won't be very pleased to see us. 
Oh, perfect fucking timing. I was just thinking this would be a great time for it to be continued. If it isn't, I'm going to save and probably end it here. But thank you. Fucking hell yeah. All right. That was another fucking good episode. God damn it. All right. We're starting to get some answers now. And, and you're looking even more into and Gina and uh, her relationship with McGundles. Oh, man. It was nice. I was glad they went into more detail. I, I kind of thought, well, okay. I, I just sort of assumed, like, like why did she do what he wanted? It's like, well, he's a powerful guy or something. But I'm glad she actually elaborated. Uh, no, it's because, yeah, he would have run us out of uh, our home. Oh, man. God damn, man. Yeah, we really did kind of defend a monster, didn't we? Ah, uh, I still kind of wish he was alive. Only because I, I like voicing him. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's always sort of my fun to voice the bad guys. But also, this voice is just kind of fun for me. On the right side, we do have these flashbacks. <laughs> oh, man. This is so fucking good. Okay, so it sounds like Sherlock... Unless Sherlock is faking it or something, or he's, like... I mean, like, he's putting on a show to make people think he was, like, really hurt badly, and but he wasn't really... But I feel like they, if they did that by this point with how upset everybody is, I feel like that would be a little, a little cheeky and a little, uh, uh, would piss people off. So I think it's probably, I think he probably did get shot. I mean, what did they convict all, it convinced all the doctors and the, and the police or something too? I, I don't know. And the fact that they said, oh, he's resisting all the anest anesthesia, that sounds like, that doesn't sound like they're lying to pretend or anything. And I'm not sure what reason or, uh, they would have to pretend, but I don't know, like, some crazy Sherlock reason, you know? I had to pretend I was shot and almost died because of... I, I, so I could investigate on my own. I, I don't know. But um, anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already become Pee Penguin. For this sale, be where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!